Today I'm going to go over the chapter 12 comprehension check. These are called reduction oxidation problems and these are problems that you see in batteries. Um, they are problems that where electrons are either gained or lost throughout the equation. And so in order to first start calculating how these electrons move, you need to be able to determine what we call the oxidation state of a compound. And so that's what the first comprehension check is. Comprehension check one, they give you a compound and they're asking you to determine the oxidation state. Oxidation state are very similar to charges. The only thing that's really different is that when we are dealing with compounds, you've learned that covalent compounds cannot have a charge because they're sharing their electrons equally. And so we actually assign an oxidation state to covalent compounds. And I'll go away how to do that as we work through this, but essentially the compound and covalent compound that pulls electrons to it more will, kind of, will give it an oxidation state of a negative even though, so it's a little bit different than charges. So for comprehension check question one, A, they give you the compound of magnesium chloride and they're wanting you to basically tell them the oxidation states. So what you need to do is you need to look at your periodic table and I've put just a quick, um, the first 20 of the elements up here of the periodic table. When we're dealing with an ionic compound, the oxidation states are simply the charges. And so for magnesium chloride, we have magnesium, which is a metal, and chloride, which is a non-metal. And so its oxidation states are just simply going to be the charges. So if you'll remember, magnesium is a group 2A, so it has a charge on it of plus 2. And chlorine is a group 7, and so it actually has a charge on it of negative 1. And if you're one of my students from class, I don't really have space up here, but I would frequently have them write negative 1 and negative two over that column so they can remember those charges. So let's look at let's look at calcium oxide. And so yet once again, it is ionic because I have a metal and I have a non-metal. So the oxidation state is just gonna be the charges. So for calcium, it's group 2A, so it's a plus two. And for oxygen, it's six, it's group six, so it's a negative two. So for difluoride, I actually have two nonmetals. They're both over here in the nonmetal side of my periodic table. So I do not have an ionic compound. So I cannot use the charges as the oxidation state. So let me kind of show you how we would figure this out. So if I have my sulfur and I am using the green dots to represent the six valence electrons on sulfur, and then I'm putting two fluorines out and each fluorine has seven red dots as its valence electrons. Now I haven't, a lot of people would put fluorine on each side of the sulfur. For high school chemistry, that's okay, but I wanted you to see it as you get older, or if you remember from a few chapters ago, this shape, because of these extra lone pairs of electrons, it actually makes this weird bent shape. Um, so I'm just gonna show it that way. But since it's a covalent compound, what happens is one of the fluorine and one of the sulfurs here make this bond. And the same happens for down here. But if you remember from our chapter on the periodic table, we had a term called electronegativity. And that is how hard a compound or an element pulls electrons to it. And if you'll remember the most, ele most electronegative are towards the, the right side and the upper side of the periodic table. And so if I look at where sulfur and fluorine is, fluorine is actually further towards that corner than sulfur. So it's more electronegative. So fluorine is actually gonna pull those charges towards it. So these are actually gonna pull towards the fluorine. Now when that happens, sulfur has lost its two electrons. And so it gets an oxidation state of two plus. And then each, fluor each fluorine has gained an electron. So they each have an oxidation state of negative one. So we would put on this a two plus and a one negative. And I know I frequently put the negative before or after. So then the next compound that they ask you to give oxidation states is for oxygen. And even though, so this is, you should recognize as a homonuclear diatomic, and it is just two oxygen, so there's no metal. So it's a covalent bond. 
But when you have two oxygens, if it's a tug of war, they both pull the electrons the same. One of them doesn't pull any harder. So it's, so it's oxidation state or it's just zero. So comprehension check question number two is the exact same. It's asking you to tell the oxidation state, the only difference is between problem one and problem two. They give you a list of rules that you can use to follow. And so the first one they give you is HG. If you're not familiar with what HG is on the periodic table, it's actually down here in the transition metals. And since we have it here just one atom, it isn't pulling electrons or sharing in any compound, so its oxidation state is simply zero. So the next compound they give you is lithium and sulfur, is lithium sulfide. And so this you'll recognize has a metal of lithium and it has a non-metal in it. So since it has a metal and a non-metal, it is an ionic compound. And remember when we said an ionic compound, is oxidation state is just the charges of the ions. And so lithium being in group one, a charge of one plus, and sulfur has a charge of two minus. So for C, it is a polyatomic ion in here, but we have potassium and sulfide. And so it is an ion, if you'll recognize potassium as a metal, and this is, should know is sulfate. So we have, potassium, which is group one, so it has a charge of one plus. Now, we need to figure out the oxidation state of all the parts of the sulfate. Even though the polyatomic ion is actually covalently compound, it actually does still have oxidation states. So, if I have two potassiums, I know that this whole thing is a positive two. So this is gonna have a total oxidation state of a negative two which if you remember your polyatomic ions, you actually should have committed that to memory. Now, I know that oxygen has a charge of two, and I actually don't know what sulfur is. If you'll remember the rules after comprehension check one, the rule number six that they give you is that the oxidation state of oxygen is usually a two negative, and for this class, it pretty much always is. So now we need to figure out the oxidation state of sulfur. Since it is this covalent compound, I can't just look and say it's two negative. So I have to calculate it. Well, if I have four two negative oxygens, that's four times two. This is a total charge here of eight. And remember, I'm trying to get it to a total charge of negative two. And so the oxidation state on sulfur has to be a six. I'm gonna walk you through again how I did that. Potassium, each potassium has an oxidation state of positive one. So I'm gonna say that's a total of two because two times one is two. If I have one six, one positive six, and then I have two, or sorry, four negative twos. So two sixes is eight minus eight is zero. That one's really tricky. So the next one we have, we have Cl2. So we have chlorine over here, but we are in a homonuclear diatomic. And if you'll remember the rule, actually rule number two, that homonuclear diatomics, their oxidation state is zero because one of the chlorines is not gonna pull harder on the electrons than another chlorine. They just have the same pull. For compound NF3, um, these, these are both non-metals. We have another covalently compound. And there's no rule to tell me on nitrogen if it's in a covalent compound, but I do know the rule for fluorine and that fluorine is always a negative one or one negative. So here, if fluorine, if fluorine is one negative, then the nitrogen is gonna have to be, there's three of these, so a three. So here we have CH4, have a carbon and four hydrogens. There is no rule for how to figure out an oxidation state for carbon, but I do know that hydrogens are always plus one or one plus. And so therefore I have a positive four. So my carbon must be a negative four. For our last one, we have a phosphorus and we have a chloride. So we have both non-metals. So we have another 
covalently bonded compound. So we don't actually have a rule for phosphorus, but we do have the very last rule for chlorine. And it tells us that most of these are usually negative one. For most of this class, they are gonna be negative one, which is why I just have my students write it on top of their periodic table. Um, so if chlorine is, a neg is one negative, I have a total charge there or oxidation state of three negative. So phosphorus must be a three positive. Question number six gives you three balanced chemical equation and it asks you for each of these equations to indicate whether it's a redox reaction, indicate what's oxidized and what is being reduced to show what is the oxidizing agent and what is the reducing agent. So before we do this, you need to understand what it means to be oxidized and what it means to be reduced. And so we use in chemistry, we say Leo says GER. Leo is L-E-O and we use that, we say loss of electrons. So if it's lost electrons, it was oxidized. And then with the GER, gaining electron reduction. So if it gains electrons throughout the compound, it is reduced. So we're gonna have to first step before we can figure out any of those things is we have to go through these compounds and figure out the oxidation states. So for the first one, I have sulfur and for fluorine. So I know from my rules that fluorine has an oxidation state of one negative. And there, if I have four fluorine, sulfur must have an oxidation state of four positive. And so here, I know that fluorine, in this case, has an oxidation state of zero. And I know that because it's a homonuclear diatomic. And one of the fluorines is not pulling harder than the other fluorine. Now, in the compound, the product that I'm making, I still know that fluorine has an oxidation state of one negative. So here it is a total of six negative. So this must be six positive. Now, if we'll look at what we started with sulfur, went from being four plus to being six plus. And for sulfur to be gaining a positive charge, it's actually losing electrons. So it is being oxidized. And fluorine is actually going from being a zero to a negative one. So it is gaining an electron, so fluorine is being reduced. And since there is moving of electrons, yes, this is a redox equation. The second part, I want you to tell what is the reducing agent and what is the oxidizing agent. So we're, to figure out the agents, um, there is like a rule, and I think it's a repeat box in the book, and it tells you, I'll just read it. If a reactant is being reduced, we call it the oxidizing agent because it's doing the oxidizing onto another reactant. So this just feels a little bit backwards, but if sulfur is being oxidized here, then here it's the reducing agent. And here, since fluorine has been reduced, here we would call it the oxidizing agent really hard to get those like we get those confused a lot so maybe it would be easier here to write I don't know if it's easier to write it that way I don't really have enough space to put it all in there but let's go through another one maybe that'll help make it make more sense so for this one the first part is figure out oxidation states to see if electrons are moving around to even know if it's a redox equation so I also know that hydrogen has, a ch elect has an oxidation state of one and chlorine of one negative. And so let's keep going. Um, if I have potassium hydroxide, this is an ionic compound because I have a metal and a non-metal. So the potassium is a group 1A, so it's gonna be a one. And then hydroxide, um, hydrogen is also a one. Even though this is hydroxide is a covalent compound, I have to figure out the oxidation states within that compound. I know hydroxide has a total charge, this whole thing of negative one, just because I learned that a few chapters ago. And so this is a two negative. You take a two negative and a one positive, you get a one negative. And so, oops, I always write those backwards. <laughs> 
So now with water, same thing, covalent compound, but hydrogen is a one and oxygen is usually a two. And for potassium chloride, we have an ionic compound. So we have potassium over here and the first, so it is a one plus and chlorine is a group seven. And those are almost always one negative. You're going to learn these rules and be able to do them really fast. I'm actually going to erase the first problem. There we go. See if that helps. So let's see if anybody's changing, gaining, or losing electrons. So hydrogen keeps one throughout. Chlorine keeps a negative one throughout. Potassium stays a positive one. And my oxygen stays a negative two. So nobody's gaining or losing electrons in this compound. So it is not a reduction oxidation equation. So you have to do anything else. But for the last compound they give us, let's figure out the oxidation states and see if it is a redox equation. So copper is just one element and we know if it's just one, it has a zero. And so we have now an acid you should recognize with that H in the beginning but we have that hydrogens are a one plus, and I know those oxygens there are two minus, two times three is what, six? Six plus one, five, so this has to be a positive five. We don't hear we have six hydrogens, they give you the plus, so it makes it pretty easy to figure out it's plus one. Um, now this is the same for this one, it's just copper, but it's not zero, it's two plus, that's why they tell you. When we have an N and an O, that's actually a covalent compound, but I know that oxygen is usually a two minus, so my nitrogen is gonna be a plus two. Those are really messy twos. Um, and so water is a one plus for the hydrogen and the oxygen is a two. Let's see, is this happening? So copper is actually going from a zero to a two, so it is actually changing electrons. So yes, this is a reduction oxidation equation. So let's figure out what is being oxidized. What is losing electrons? And so if you look at copper, it's actually going from being a zero to a positive number, which means it's losing its negative electrons. And Leo, losing electrons is oxidation. So copper is oxidized. I'm just gonna write abbreviations. Um, and the next thing that changes, let's see, hydrogens, one, stay the same, is nitrogens. The nitrogen goes from being a plus five to a two minus. So it is actually gaining seven electrons. And so gaining electrons, GER, gaining electrons reduction. So the nitrogen is actually reduced. Now the rest of the question wants you to tell you what is the oxidizing agent. An agent is something that does it. And so what, ox what did the oxidization? Well, the nitrogen is what did the oxidization. If you'll remember, we switched them. And so the, what is the reducing agent is actually the copper. 